Let's kick it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to what's new in Windows Whistler Build 2416, and boy do I have some exciting new features to show you. Ordinarily there would be, but this time I'm in, in the interrogative sense and the answer is no, I don't have. But I do have a shed load of new icons and everybody likes those. Well, unless they're the intermediary Windows 10 ones anyway. Ok, so today let's start where we normally start, with the differences in the theme files. And that's where we end with the differences in the theme files. As far as the sample ones are concerned anyway, they're pretty much exactly the same as they were. These bits are still normally broken, unless you fix them. And the start menu is exactly the same. The only problem I've seen with it, and I can't remember if it happened in the last version, uh, but I don't think it did, last build even, was if you select a list view, then the text gets truncated down even though there's plenty of space for it to rendering. Now obviously this is because the width of the item is set to here but I don't think that was part of the theme file because I don't think I, I don't remember changing anything to do with width or anything like that. So I think it's on a problem on a per app basis and it happens most frequently in regedit. But yeah as you can see there's plenty of space left but some reason it truncates when it gets to well, that far there, and to prove that it's not universal, as you can see here in Explorer, that things of any length display correctly, so I guess it's just a problem with Regedit, which has had a problem with the themes in the past. As for watercolour though, it's a slightly different story, there is something slightly different about it, and it's on the start menu. If you remember in 2410, this user picture tile, which you had to enable in the themes, was all the way on the right side instead of the left, but nope, now it's been switched over to the left, and that's pretty much where it stays until XP. That's pretty much all the differences I can find in the watercolour one. There's some slightly different bits in the theme file. These um, parameters here, uh, slightly out uh, of new, but they don't do anything noticeable, like, well, change anything, so uh, there's no reason to talk about them any more than I have done. Another thing I've noticed that sometimes happens in 2416 is after you've logged out and you're presented with the login screen, obviously, is that when you try and click on an account and try and log in again, the carrot doesn't appear in the password field, so you can't actually type anything, as I'm trying to type now, and nothing's happening. Also what doesn't happen is you can't click on this link to show the unread mail messages, that doesn't work either, even though I'm clicking like mad. Although you can click on this thing and restart the computer and turn it off, and that's pretty much the only recourse you have at this point, because the other accounts don't work you can't type in on the other accounts and yep the password hint doesn't work so you can't click on that so this entire middle bit seems to lose its clickability after you've done the initial click even though you can still click on the other two so mm, yeah so that's a problem and the only action you can take is to restart one new thing that's in 2416 which has question marks about why the hell it was added in the first place is in shell 32 and if we look at the new exports then we can see there's this one here called app compact underscore run dllw now the underscore run dllw gives you a clue that it's meant to be used by the run dll 32 application which should pass arguments to it and therefore make it do something so if you use run dll32, then you want shell32.dll, comma, app compact run dllw, and then we need some arguments. But what are the arguments? Well, if we go into the 
disassemble it for the function, we can see that it's, it is a standard run DLL function because it takes a command line as the second per third <laughs> third parameter, isn't it? It's h instance h instance lp string. Yeah. Well, anyway, then the argument it takes is it copies it first to its own buffer, then it gets the arguments from the buffer, and then it removes the arguments from the buffer, and then it checks if what you've got left is scan disk w, or rather scan disk w, because God knows we can't have eyes here. And then if it does that, it launches this dialog, and that's all it does. So you have to give it a argument of scan disk w, so let's do that and see what happens. Even though it uses case insensitive comparisons, I'll just type it in the capitals anyway. And uh, I spelled it wrong. The run got capitalized, that's why it's spelled wrong. And now I've got insert on. Why is that on? Anyway, yep, you can see you can run it and nothing actually happens. Do it as many times as you want and nothing happens. Now, why does that happen? Well, that happens because of a not of a problem, but it's just the way that run DLL32 is designed. Now you may not know much about strings in Microsoft Windows, but there are two types of strings. There are narrow strings, which are 8 bits a character and are pretty much just for ASCII and code page characters. If you don't know what this means, it doesn't really matter. And there are wide strings, which is what this W on the end of the function name usually represents. And they're 2 bytes per character, and that's pretty much Unicode or UTF-16 and what this does is since this is a wide function it takes characters in this Unicode thing and uses all these W functions to get the data it needs and checks it but run DLL 32 the standard version well I think that's the only version that passes these strings as the narrow strings so this would be is 8 bits per character so that would take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 bytes. But the function is expecting it to take 2 bytes per character, which would be 16 bytes. So when it does this compare here, this fails because it doesn't have, well, it's not the right string it's looking for because it, it's expecting 2 bits per character and getting 1. So the string seems to be of a different length. And then it fails and it doesn't actually work. So what you have to do to actually get that to work is write your own things. And I've already done that, and that's run scan this. Is that right? Yep, that's right. And you can see at the bottom here, it's now got a dialog and it says scan disk. Now, if you've used any old versions of Windows, like 95 and 98 and all that, you're probably thinking scan disk, that's been like obsolete for yonks now. And you'd probably be right. So, why this is here, I don't know. But what this does is it starts with a window that's initially off the screen. so to actually see what it do brings, you have to move it onto the screen. And there we are. And it says select the disk you want to check for errors. So you can check it. But instead of actually running the old scan disk, which if you may remember had the, the in progress bar at the bottom of the screen running up the screen, yes. it actually just launches this. Now you're going, I recognize that dialogue, and yep, you do. For if you open up an Explorer window and go to Drive Properties and Tools, it's the actual error checking dialogue. So quite why they went to all this trouble to put that in is a new thing, so it's obviously not required for compatibility or anything, even though it's got compat in its name. And it doesn't run with run DLL32, so why it's got run DLL in its name, we don't know. And the strange thing is, this wasn't just a like one shot that was in XP. Nope, it was in XP, it was in Vista, and it's actually it's still it's in Windows 7. It might actually even be in 10, I haven't checked. I don't think I don't think I checked. But anyway, as you can here you can see in Windows 7 it does the same thing. It has a dialogue title scan disk and lets you pick a disk to check for errors and then it 
says it needs to finger cross check disk needs administrative privileges so yeah quite why that's here I don't know quite why they didn't make it work with the tool it was meant to work with I don't know but all in all it seems to be pretty redundant as I mentioned in the intro, and the major thing that's different in 2416 than 2410 is that there's a cornucopia of new icons. And nowhere is this more apparent than if you click on control panel, and there you have it. Most of these icons are different from 2410, and just to prove that to you, I'll open 2410 and show you. As you can see, these are all the usual Windows 2000 icons. And here are the new ones. As you can see, pretty much all of them have changed, apart from network connections and uh, phone and modem, phone and modem options, and printers and faxes, and schedule. Actually, most of them are actually the same. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much. There's actually a few more icons for the inbox apps that have changed. I don't know if they're on here. All of the card game icons have changed, as well as Pinball and Minesweeper and all of those. Pin's icon has also changed, and Calculator. Windows Movie Maker, I'm not sure about that one because I don't usually look in there. But WordPads, nope, that's exactly the same. There is one app that's got slightly more interesting, well, a slightly more interesting icon change, and that is Charm App. Now, that's what it used to look like, all boring, just a box with some logos on it, and well, characters obviously. But the new one, it's obviously different and has the old one, but it's also got this, what looks like concept art in it, which actually looks more like a drawing of the old one than it does the new one. But they're pretty much the same anyway, it's just been slightly rotated. Other icons that have changed, which aren't readily apparent in the UI or control panel, uh, in the desktop pro uh, desktop properties ones, that one has changed. Also, that has changed is keyboard and mouse ones, and that one is 100. That's the mouse that's changed, and 200. That's the keyboard that's changed, and 400 has one as well, and that is the font folder icon. Also has changed is the multimedia control panel icons. It's mostly in the control panel icons where all these changes have been witnessed. That's the sound, obviously. And the sound again. Don't know why that's in there twice, but there we are. And I think game control panel one has had its icon changed from a old um, finger controller, what they call joystick controller, with the central stick in the middle to a. I don't know, it looks like a. I'm not sure what sort of controller it's meant to be. Xbox, maybe? The hardware wizard has also changed its icons. And it's, the CD has been replaced with this. I know it's like some sort of parallel controller, parallel port connector thing. Not quite sure why they replaced the CD with that, considering that's like older technology than the CD. The infrared properties has also changed. Oh, I've appeared to accept that down wrong, because there is no 100 in there, so it's probably that one. Yep. That's the system control panel. The time and date control panel. And finally, the, pit, the icons for pictures. I think that's in. I haven't written this down. I think it's in. I don't think it's in Shamidi. I think it's Shaimg View. find out in a minute. Nope. Yep, there we go, it's the bitmap icons. 
is changed. Also the icons for pings and for JPEGs. I think that's it. Nope, this other I, this other picture as well. I think that's it this time. Yeah, they're printers. Yeah, so that's pretty much all of the icon changes for 2416. There's another there's another one that's actually had an icon added, and that's these for MSRC incident files, which were the remote control desktop remote desktop helping session. <laughs> you know, we did it last time. The icons for that the incidents. There you go. This thing even though it's not actually working because for some reason it must have updated the content of the XML files between versions but yeah that's had an icon added to it it's also the icon for the actual help center itself as far as icons go I think that's pretty much all of them not to be completely rubbish 2416 has a number of firsts one of them is this that you can add a computer description on the computer name when you're naming your computer and this will actually show up on the new sort of computers near me slash network neighborhood slash work group computers display so if you go to my network places and inside network windows network MSO then it turns up here on the well next to your computer name and as you can see this wasn't present in 2014 and as you can see it doesn't actually show up on Windows 7 the description anywhere you can't see it on the on the details down here or with the computer name so so yeah that's the first thing that's the first first for 2416 the second first 2416 has is something we've been checking on for quite a while now. You may remember in previous builds, in several previous builds when I've gone to advanced and turned on run with different credentials and then tried to run the program and got as far as this and then clicked OK and it's errored out with an error message. This time it works and now it's finally working. But what does it do? What does it mean? Well, if we open up Process Explorer and you use the properties on the process which you ran as restricted, then you can see that it has slightly different security arrangements than the one that you didn't, which is the one on the right here. And you can tell that immediately by all these privileges in the bottom window they've pretty much all been disabled and well not disabled they've pretty much all been removed in the restricted one now most of these privileges are things that the ones that are disabled can be enabled by the program itself you don't have to actually go to a change a setting or anything and these are actually quite well quite powerful things you can see here if you move them down you can change the system time you can take ownership of files objects and other things you can load drivers and pretty much the most powerfulest powerfulest the most powerful of all you can use the debug privilege which lets you look at pretty much the memory of anything including in XP I think the actual system as a whole and physical memory so that's quite a powerful privilege to have so the restricted one gets rid of all of them and the other ones which I didn't mention and just leaves you with this change notify privilege which is required to go through the file system. Also you can see in the top box here that there are two entries for every single entry on the right side and what this is if we scroll across you can see that that's because one of them is marked as restricted and they take priority over the non-restricted ones in Windows security so you can see that's why they're there so all these ones are all these are different like security principles which you can authenticate and access resources as in Windows. So you've got the logon SID, which is the pretty much the ID of your logon session. Everyone, which is just basically you have an account, so you're part of everyone. 
local, you've logged on locally, so you're part of the local account. Authenticated users, you have a password, and so you're part of authenticated users. This one on the left is part of restricted because it's obviously a restricted token because we run it as ourselves, but as restricted, as you can see the one on the right doesn't have that one. You've got none, I'm not quite sure what that's for, but it's none anyway. Now, the other difference is in the administrators one. In the restricted one, it's marked as deny only, whereas in the normal one, it's just owner. Now this means you can't actually access things which require administrator access with the restricted the restricted process because it's only allowed to check for deny rather than allowance. Okay, since I explained that like I just heard of it 10 minutes ago, here's an example. I've set up a directory that's got admin only security on it, so only admins can access it. And inside there, there's a file, ignore that one. There's a file which also has the admin only security on it. So what happens if you do this from a normal one and you're on the ad you've got an administrator account, obviously, if you haven't then that just doesn't really apply to that. Then you can obviously cd into the directory and you can type out the file or read it or whatever. Now if you try it with the restricted one which has the deny on the administrator SID then you can actually access it because you get access is denied. Likewise the file inside you can actually access that. No, that was the old one. Because access is denied because only administrators can access it and the restricted process only as the administrator said for deny only. And likewise if we go set up another directory for everyone, although it's not really for everyone, it's just the defaults which allow pretty much everyone. Then in here we've got a file and just to show you this has got all the others, the normal SIDs on it like the users group and system administrators. Now only admins and system can write to this file. So let's see obviously what happens. The normal one that's unrestricted can cd into the directory like everyone can. Oh jeez. My short term memory is quite rubbish. Admin right. And as you can see you can write to it and you can also add stuff into the file right to it and space off but whatever you can see you can write to it as normal now if you do that with the restricted one you can access the directory since um, the restricted process still has the users group for allow access so that allows it to gain access because it's part of the user group and users can access this directory. Likewise it can read the file because the file has also read access for the users group. But then if you try and write to it by spelling really badly So the restricted process is restricted, is its name, from actually doing the things administrators only can do and that sort of helps with the security of the system. Now for some MISC changes, although I probably shouldn't say that since 2416 is all about MISC changes. But anyway, the first one is on the desktop tab of display properties and this picture of a monitor is different, it's new, it's changed and it's got an out and it's got a button on it in the corner so you could turn it on and off if it was real which isn't because it's a picture obviously and it's got a flappy bit in the middle where you'll be able to pull it down and change all the contrast and brightness settings what am I on about as a picture anyway just to show the difference in 2410 it was an old style monitor it had a base on it for a start and it had indicators in the top right 
and it didn't have anywhere where you could, if it was real, open and fiddle with the brightness. Another change in 2416, which isn't apparent on the face of it, is that the system file checker, which checks for changed or damaged system files and then replaces them with non-good ones, has been extended to different files. Now I didn't realise this at start, which is kind of a reason why this is late, because I was doing a lot of changes and I thought, hmm, this is working quite well, and obviously it was just replacing them with old versions. And that was mainly in the theme files. Since I usually do that first, it was doing all these things and I was like, oh man, it's I gotta do all that again because it's actually quite laborious to uncomment all them things and stick it back in again with res hack anyway. So anyway, yeah, we can see here resources theme professional professional has been included in the umbrella of things to check. As well as test, as you may have seen down here. The test sample styles. And there's actually quite a lot of other files which have been added and then removed from the the purveyance of SFC and they've mainly included the MSN games and don't worry about that text that's just code which has been interpreted as text by the thing I use they didn't actually strings of people just mashing on the keyboard like that also on the subject of the themes well their functionality rather than the actual themes themselves is that they've now the functionality has now been moved into a service rather than being explorers um, job to theme everything it's now in a service and if you disable it or stop it then you don't really notice a difference straight away everything still looks like it should start menu run menu one thing you may notice though is that some windows don't have the tab in the top left corner and the windows are looking decidedly more square now than they were before and if you go to appearance you can't change any themes you want to change it back to classic and even then that sort of doesn't work and it leaves you with a sort of franken 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 theme whereas the start menu is sort of classic -y in style and the run dialog is a sort of mishmash of styles and other windows sort of a classic whereas other windows are as they should be so yeah don't disable the theme service because it sort of mucks everything up another misc change which is the miskest of the misc is in this file here it's qmanager.dll and that's got a description of background download service and an internal name of drizzle well, this has now become in 2416 something way more um, familiar, and that's now the Background Intelligent Transfer Service, or as people normally call it, Bits. So it's been renamed from Drizzle to Bits, and that's literally it. That's I told you it was Misc. Now for something which isn't new, but I hadn't seen it until I saw it, and then when I saw it, I said this video needs all the padding it can get, so I can show it now. And I'm showing it now, and it's in NetPLWiz, which is one of our old friends, and it's Dialog 112, and it's the Map Network Drive, well, Dialog Progress thing, and it's, it says attempting to connect to Weebong. Now, obviously, that's placeholder text, as it says in the next couple of words, but at runtime from String Resources. So yeah, I just thought that was something fun and amusing, which I hadn't seen before. Now you're probably thinking, if you've used these builds yourselves, that they're not actually that bad from a stability standpoint. I mean, they don't crash every five minutes. I mean, they have their share of bugs, but nothing that's too major or would, if you were, you know, a bit strange, stop you from using it as the main OS. But they were still having problems with some bugs, and you can mainly see this, see this in the kernel. If you disassemble or just grep for strings in NTOS kernel or NTKRNLPA, yeah, that's right, then you'd notice these strings at some point if you're looking for them. And basically, there's some checks that happen, and before it blue screens, that's what this KE bug check X does, that's basically a bug check is the internal name for blue screen, then you get this message printed to the debugger if you had one attached 
and it says CCPF verify section info table. CC stands for cache controller, which is the part of the kernel which was having problems. Then it says section info table of trace blah de blah is corrupt. Please contact C Inc. who is trying to hunt down this problem. So while it might not be that bad from a stability standpoint, there were still bugs in Windows which they were trying to track down and were having a hard time reproducing. So if you managed to hit that while you had a debugger running and saw that, you'd give the um, memory dump to this bloke and he'd look through it and he'd go, oh yes, that's what the problem is. <laughs> yeah, like that happens. But anyway, yeah, that's the... That's an error they were having trouble tracking down and they added special code to the kernel so if it happened you could help them out by sending them the debug dump. Another new visual thing in 2416 is the dialog that everybody made friends with when they reinstalled Windows and that was so notorious that many driver writers of the unscrupulous kind decided to create apps or code within their installers to quickly click it out of the way so you wouldn't see it. Yep, it's the unsigned driver dialog. And in 2416, it looks like this. It tells you the hardware, and it says that it's not passed logo testing, and it might not actually work with Windows, although it probably would do. And then it says it tells tell me why it's important, and it's important because the link we followed was a bad syntax. That's very important to know. And it's got most of the same text that was in the last design of it, but there's less of it. So this is the same stuff in less words, which is always good because nobody reads this thing anyway, so it takes up less space on the screen. And it's now got a link, hyperlink, it's got bolding, it's got an icon, and it's still got the bold, well, the capital saying stop, you probably really shouldn't do this. But everybody's click continue anyway because people don't read these things and just click the, first, the one that's on the left. Now in 2410, it looks like it did in 2000 still. It had a picture instead of an icon, but everything else was was pretty much the same as we just saw, but it had more verbiage in it. And it was more plain. Do you want to continue with no, like, it had more personality, doesn't it, now, instead of how it did. Even though we all know activation isn't fully working yet in this build, in NTDLL, there's actually a new function which should, well, lock the product activation keys, whatever that means. Now, I looked in the code of NTDLL and that just calls something in the kernel. Now, trying to find it in the kernel is easier said than done, but I did find it and I don't actually know what it does. It's quite a long function and it does several things and I've lost it, which is why I'm not showing you the code of it now. <laughs> because I was doing that before and then I closed it without saving and then when I reopened IDA I had to find it again and I haven't succeeded in finding it again. So that's why. But yeah, I, I've called it and it doesn't seem to actually do anything or show anything or, I don't know, stop you from logging in, logging out, whatever, change the time bomb or anything. It just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it does. But it does some things because it's quite a long function. So... Yeah, all this other new stuff in NTDLL is pretty much nothing, it's all just utility functions. All of it quite useful utility functions as it is, but utility functions nonetheless, they don't do anything by themselves. And all the other new functions in here, they're pretty much the same way, or they're just renamed versions of things that already exist. So yeah, there's not much actually new in here. See, the only thing that's really new is launch privacy dialog. That would actually do something. But you all know what the cookie dialog looks like in Internet Explorer 6, which is what that launches. And so, yeah, that's pretty much it as far as stuff that is new and stuff that is changed. And so, I will say thank you for watching if you're still watching. I'll see you in 2419, where things may even be less changed than they are in this one. Because that's only three builds away. But anyway, let's see what the future holds.